I'm gonna be all honest with you, I have no idea what a fury is. So I don't, I don't know. Wild or violent anger. I'll tell you what I'm angry about right now. I, I, my phone? Phone, are you okay? It's a good thing that's got an indestructible case, but... I see this guy at my school and he was like flipping his phone around and I'm like, uh, if you drop that it might end incredibly badly for you and he's like, oh no, I do this all the time and I'm like, okay, but you still shouldn't do it unless it's like, you have to, but, listen, let me just quickly tell you. Okay, so you know the whole story about, uh, well I told you earlier, how like before, like I didn't know that space on my computer was a big issue, because it is, like, Making videos is the same as putting stuff on a shelf. It runs out of space. And I wasn't aware of that really, because I had this good, sorry, this, this DVD keeps on falling out. I had this hard drive that had a terabyte of space. Now a terabyte is a lot, and I was told you don't have to worry about it filling up with space for ages. Space isn't an issue for you. And I was like, oh, okay, sounds great. And then I went a couple of years on YouTube without worrying about space. I didn't even know that it was really even a thing. And then all of a sudden, time came by, and all of a sudden, my hard drive was close to being filled up. I had filmed up to almost a terabyte of things. And it's not just videos as well. But... Anyway, like freaking out and I was like, oh my gosh, and it was like this whole new level of stress that was already built up on all the school and other things that I do and all all the you getting YouTube videos out and stuff like that. Now I had to worry about space and like my my, my hard drive, like it shows space and normally it's like this blue thing to represent what's filled up and this gray to represent what's empty. But it was so it was in the red zone. And I was like, oh my god. Luckily though I got another hard drive, this time with Four terabytes. So that should have lasted me for quite a long time. Nope. I just checked recently and it says 700 gigabytes left. Which sounds okay, it should last me for another year, but it makes no sense. It should- I should still be able to go for ages without running out of space. Especially seeing as it's dropping so fast. Cause I look- I looked into the hard drive, I was like, this can't be- I looked at the hard drive and I looked at everything and nothing seemed to be incredibly big. And in fact, I looked at- I- I actually took everything in the hard drive and added it up. And it was just over a terabyte. So like, I was coming close to a terabyte before and that's when I got the new four terabyte hard drive. And now I was just over a terabyte. So all that I filmed ever since I got that new hard drive hasn't been much. And yet, the hard drive's saying that it's almost up. And like, I took everything in it. It says just over a terabyte. But the hard drive itself says over three. Well over three. 300 gigabytes over three. And I was like, what? Makes no sense. M maybe if I just keep on saving, maybe it'll just... Maybe, maybe, I mean like, and then like I looked, it said 703 gigabytes, and then I just looked around for a bit, I came back, it said 701. I looked again, 700, then 699, then 689, then 686. I'm not even doing anything, and it's losing gigabytes somehow. I tried to like do some stuff, I'm like trying to compress the files, whatever that means, and then it keeps on dropping. Maybe if I just keep on going, maybe it'll say that it's filled up, and then it'll just keep on saving, because like, it says it's running out, but when I take everything in it, the math doesn't add up. Okay, I rambled on that, but... Okay, uh, anyway. <sighs> Struggles of YouTube to... I, I... Remember, I'm not even getting paid for this anymore. This is literally just something that I do in my spare time now, so... The struggles are pretty tough. Uh, alright, alright, yes, new shirts. Uh, right, so next day... Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I was also ticked off by sign outs, which I will explain in my next video, The Impossible Quiz 2. Like, it'll be me playing The Impossible Quiz demo, and then 2, I have those both filmed, but not uploaded. Uh, yeah, but anyway, okay, I was so ticked off. Being an introvert, being surrounded by people for a good, like, two straight, is not good for my sanity, let alone when it's so hot. Like, like, it was so, like, it got a little bit better when it started to rain. I, I, I'm gonna uh, add that to some of my third doctor uh, intros. Y y you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about later on, but I have that fan blowing. I have this fan blowing. All the doors are closed. All, uh, all the all the windows are closed. All the doors are open. I have the air conditioning on. Oh, okay. Okay, okay.
Hey, this Mickey. But anyway, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, anyway, so, I've cooled off both literally and figuratively, and anyway, so it's time for me to review Fiori from the Deep. Let's go. What you're saying is that they actually have uh, two discs in this one, and they sticky nose again, but yeah, this is a parts uh, one to three, and that's part four to six, I think. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, interesting thing is that uh, this is a six parter, and all six parts are missing, but it is actually the final story in which all of the episodes are missing. We do have uh, three. Uh, the DVD seems fine, but the DVD player... <sighs> Stupid DVD player! Uh, but, but the interesting thing is that uh, we do have uh, three more stories that are missing, but they're not entirely missing. <laughs> there you go, okay, so, so sometimes sometimes when the DVD player won't open and also refuse to turn off somehow, sometimes you have to just resort to pulling the plug. Anyway, yeah, take uh, this out. And put this in. Um, that was uh, Superman 3 and 4, by the way. It's like this side Superman 3, this side Superman 4 is cool. Here we go. There we go. Uh, I, I, tried to, I tried to hit play earlier on that and hit record on my camera, but that would be cutting the intro close before when I rolls in, but instead it, it didn't hit play, so I just, there was a hesitant moment. It's, yeah, well, whatever, you guys have probably no idea what I'm talking about. But by the way, might I mention that while I am pretty much by myself, occasionally with help from other people, uh, working at my videos like this, it is nice to feel like you guys are here as the view. Here, I need to talk to you face to face. I, I need to turn, I need to turn this down. But it feels nice to know that you guys are here watching my videos, which truly feels amazing, because then when the struggles do come, I feel like, you know, I feel like you guys at least care, he, he, you know, like, like, and like, it's just nice to know that you're here, because I, then I feel like I'm not doing this by myself, I feel like there's you guys. Anyway, yeah, just wanted to say that. Okay, here we go. Who we got interviewing us? Who's this dude? Roy Spencer. Okay, probably an actor. Okay, when I first looked him up, it said that he was a meteorologist, a literal scientist, but I think he plays a scientist in this story, and also plays a uh, part of the arc. He played a maniac. Uh, that, that, that word does sound familiar. It's been, it's been a while since I watched that story, but anyway. So, uh... Yeah, so Fury from the Deep. Have I even said the title of this episode so far? Fury from the Deep. I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, this is, uh, He Who Moans. Well, his real name is Stu Bagpul. Um, but He Who Moans is a good Dr. Guru viewer. He does say a few swear words, and sometimes he goes a little bit too far with some of the stuff that he does. So, if, if you're, like, a younger kid, I wouldn't recommend watching him until, like, you're... 13, 14, or at least, like, you're able to, like, handle swear words and scary images and concepts because he does like what am I saying I'm making him sound much more weird. he is a good reviewer when he's actually reviewing something and he said this is his favorite episode of all time for Doctor Who so anyway here we go he was a marvelous actor because he did so little Man's internal fight with inertia. Deep words, my friend. What? Why did it change quality all of a sudden? <laughs> That's a funny story. That if this story was originally going to be called Doctor Who Colony of Devils. But they decided to change that because they didn't want that word to be in this title of an episode. This is funny. They used a TARDIS prop and hung it from a helicopter to show it materializing into the ocean by hovering down it. Eh, okay, well, time to fast forward through all this, I guess. Gas 
sounds like a heartbeat. What? Uh, uh, okay. So. Diddling, 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 diddling. Unconventional landing is right, my friend. So I like this, how like it shows like what I assume is actual footage, and then just cuts to a picture which looks like drawn or something. Suddenly, Doctor Jamie and Victoria get on the shore using a a what is it called? kayak. I guess the doctor just happened to have in the TARDIS, and I mean, I guess he might as well have it. Who knows when you'll land in the sea? It, it, it kind of seems how. They should be laying in the sea all the time. After all, the Earth is like 70% sea, something like that. But like, you know, it's like that show, Sliders, like where they travel from dimension to dimension. And then there's only two episodes where they land on a world with dinosaurs, when really the chances of the meteor hitting the Earth weren't very high. Like they should be landing on planets with dinosaurs left and right. They should be landing in universes where the Big Bang never happened left and right, to be lucky to see light. But anyway, so uh, then Jamie the makes joke another on how they're always landing in England. England. I almost said English. And then the doctor shoves some foam that happens to be on the ground in Jamie's face for scratching the fourth wall. And then, uh, oh yeah. Okay, anyway, and then they have a foam fight. This. Nah, my sauce shooter can do so many things in that. Eh, the doctor using a stethoscope. Ah, that's loose cannon, always doing the good old animating, real life footage, whatever thing. I guess knocked unconscious. Oh, <laughs> Imagine if you just woke up and two of your other friends were just saying that. They should have just arranged them in a circle so that their head would, like, form a triangle. Okay, I'm not quite sure what happened. Okay, the doctor, Victoria, and Jamie escaped and, like, Yeah, even my sauce screwdriver isn't that sure. Yeah, I, I, I think there's just something in the pipe and they don't quite know what. Probably a sea monster or evil foam. I still don't really know what the foam is. Like, was the foam just there? Is, is that something that you find just on your local beach? Just a whole bunch of foam? I don't know. Dang, this place looks fancy. Is that Boba Fett over there? It's just like piano playing like a silent movie. Oh, I thought it was like an origami bird. See, doesn't that look like an origami bird? I actually managed to pick up the camera and then film it. Before. I thought it was going to change hell's now so now I would have to rewind it, but anyway. Anyway, uh, yeah, so seaweed. Evil seaweed is something. Or do you know what? Maybe it's just seaweed that happened to be on the ceiling, you know? Maybe it's just nothing. Like loose can, the reconstruction fade in the TV, and then look, see, you can even tell like the quality of the TV kind of fading in and out. Mm, slow turn of the camera with weird noises in the background. You think? What? What? Who the heck is that? Oh, look at that! Is that like one of those rotating doors? And no, I think it's just a whole bunch of bars. You know those rotating doors? Those are fun. The three of them all together. Oh wait, no, no, no. That third thing's a machine that the doctor's holding. I thought all the bases were close together. Oh, uh, cool foam. Oh wait, the, 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 this is bad. Victoria's drowning in foam. That's pretty eerie music there. What's this? What are these guys doing? Are they just chilling or are they doing anything? I don't know. Anyway, uh, so Victoria, Victoria eventually screams. Like, like, did she forget that screaming was? The, oh, okay. This is the end. Uh, did, did did she forget that her scream was her cue to end the episode or something? Because she took a while. Like, was she just saying Doctor Jamie, or was she just building up a scream? I don't know. Well, that font looks a bit different. Well, that went fast. I guess they were in a rush. Okay, time for the next episode. Loose Cannon does this a lot, doesn't they? Where they start like a drawn picture and then cut to real footage. So as it turns out, surprise, surprise, they rescue Victoria. And then also the evil foam of doom from, I guess, the last story, which sneaked aboard the TARDIS or something. I'm just kidding. I know it's something different, but I'm just kidding. Anyway, but, uh... So, um, I guess it infected these two guys, and then they walk into the room of this woman combing her hair, and then I show you the clip, there is a surviving clip, and it's pretty eerie, but I don't want to get called for copyright. But anyway, they basically just, like, walk up and they just stand there, and they're just like... I knew that sign was up with them, though, because before they were just like... Haga. But anyway, so I guess, uh, she, like, dies or something. So they have a fight at work. And they're all like, oh, I'm sure there's a cat in your head. Really, you couldn't really hear that whisper that much. It's just like, 
but he's actually saying, in the darkness, waiting. And then that's the cliffhanger for episode two. So yeah, there's a creature in the pipes, probably. Like, what we've learned from the cliffhanger is there's probably a creature in the pipes. This is kind of what it's the beginning. All right, episode three. We, uh, uh, the screen is black. Uh, okay, blacked out for a bit. And the sound is a bit off. Really, because like, like, see here, the logo should be appearing, but it's still showing his face. I guess it's just a little bit off cue. Okay, that was weird. Uh, it's like Mission to the Unknown all over again. Oh wow, it really is like Mission to the Unknown all over again. Hopefully the Doctor and Jamie can uh, do their science stuff. Oh, uh, that's like Jaws music. Uh, if only it were ever that simple, bud. I'm not to be disturbed. Artist and start. Close the door. At least this time I know why it opened. Well, he's dying. Foam, and then there's seaweed or something coming out, which the caption's called tendrils. Yeah, I like you, caption. This is actually. Is this the first time that we're hearing Jamie scream? This is some pretty intense stuff, no wonder it was he who moans. I mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's my favorite episode. I think he just really liked it because, you know, it just seems like such a weird idea on paper. Seaweed and evil foam of doom attacking the Doctor, Victoria, and Jamie, and yet they still managed to make it work. Animation, though, like, the foam's slightly moving. Like, did they, like, get, like, a bubble bath and animate that into the picture? So this woman is possessed by the seaweed, and what? Time to switch the discs. Passing time, you think. She was possessed by the seaweed and went into the... went into the sea? Oh, I guess we're still going. Why is it playing the first Doctor music? That's not diddly ling diddly, that's ba 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 is he going into the sea too? I mean, he just kind of watched as the woman just walked in, so I think he's possessed as well. <laughs> we have some uh, surviving clips of episode four, I think, where the guy's like in a mask and he's succumbing to the evil form of doom as well. Hey, that reminds me of the Dalek Invasion of Earth. I'm not sure if I, uh, if I mentioned this before, but uh, I remember I was telling my grandma and grandpa before they watched the Dalek Invasion of Earth, one of the four main characters is not going to make it through, well, they're going to make it through, but like, they're not going to be in the next episodes. And then they're just like, what? And then they saw Ian about to fall into that crocodile, and they're like, it's Ian, I bet. And throughout this story, they were like, it's either Ian or Susan. And it ended up being Susan. First part of the invasion. Okay, I'm going to be all honest, I don't really know what's happening. I guess seaweed are breaking out or something. Oh okay, yeah, end of episode four. It's a pretty interesting clip of this guy suffocating this guard with a handkerchief. Oh, oh, that's not that. Oh, that's a seaweed hand. Okay, like this change of a telesnap here. Like, from one telesnap to basically a telesnap that's basically the exact same thing. Ah, oh no, Jamie! Jamie! Oh no, not the mouth of doom! Is this a cliffhanger? Oh, well, that's odd. Normally a cliffhanger ends like that. Oh, this is a telesnap from part one, I believe. Everyone looks so happy all of a sudden. We'll see what the doctor's horn, the doors open like four in Avengers Infinity War, but anyway, and then the doctor says an interesting line to Jamie when he says, Jamie, you go that way, I'll go this. Save a syllable and a full word right there. So they hear some disoriented voices from Victoria saying like, Jamie, doctor, and Jamie's like, could be a trap. 
I'm surprised that, like, Jamie used to be like a Highlander who didn't understand anything sci-fi and Emma's doing a pretty good job of understanding it. And then they just enter a room filled with the evil form of demon and the guy comes in and he's like, Come in, Doctor, we've been waiting for you. That's the cliffhanger for part five. I doubt the Doctor's gonna listen to him. And as I expected, episode six is on the second disc. Cue the music, future me. Thanks, news reporter guy. Yeah, he's not gonna join you no matter how many times you say it. Oh, well, Victoria, excuse me. Oh, is this a cliffhanger already? And the episode just started. Dr. Jamie and Victoria are trying to find a helicopter and loose cannon. I gotta give you props for this. This animation looks great. What? Well, well. Oh, I see. You want to trigger a cliffhanger so that you can have another week to think about what to do next. Very clever. Gotta give props to the writers for that. Did she just say, like, come on? That's a little bit of teenage slang there, isn't it? Wow, um, so the doctor uh, invents some sort of machine that can uh, create a sound vibration or something that defeats the seed. I don't know. He's like, it's like, oh no, we might not defeat. And then it's a feeling. It's like, oh, okay, it's done. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go have dinner. And then there's like four after credit scenes. They're not after credit scenes, but they're like, like, you know, like sort of as if they were, Mar they feel like Marvel post credit scene. And there's four of them. One is uh, all of them having dinner with uh, the family. Another one is the aftermath of not the family, but with the other people. And the second one is the aftermath of what happens with all the people. The third one is Victoria just decided to stay there because I guess she can't take rest this. anymore. So, Jamie decides to go with the doctor, so good for him. Friendship is always stronger than a relationship. Words to live by. And, um... I mean, like, you, you know what the right decision is. If, if, if you think that you should be with your lover instead of your best friend, okay, just, like, you know, like, just don't let your best friend down. And the fourth one is just Jamie and the Doctor saying goodbye, in which Luce Cannon just rewinds the footage of the TARDIS landing and getting up. Or maybe this is the forward version and the landing was different. I don't know. Whatever. But, uh, anyway, yeah, so Victoria's gone. Wow. Okay. Well, would I recommend it? Well, I mean, he who moans ass literally said this, the, his favorite Doctor story of all time. But I haven't really heard anyone else say that or really even mention this story so I guess it's just considered average by everyone else and I'm sorry he who moans but I'm just kind of in the group who finds it an average story I mean I guess I get why you like it you just think that it sounds like a ridiculous idea and they made it sound so scary but anyway so yeah thank you all so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it if you liked it and I really enjoyed it if you didn't like it please if you dislike it so that I know that you didn't enjoy it leave a comment down below if you liked it and why because it feels awesome against motivation and encouragement if you didn't like it please leave a comment down below saying why you didn't like it so I can prove next time otherwise you won't be able to prove and just guarantee your dislike is a four like and subscribe so that you know my next video because I think that's all shocking and as always I'll see you next time where I review story number what are we on now? Enemy of the World was 40 and 41 43 the wheel in space bye bye